Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I don't know why my office looks so dark, but it does tonight. And I do have the light on. So I hope you had an awesome, awesome Tuesday. It's already Tuesday. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Um, and I, ha I hope you are having an awesome evening. So we're going to continue our study on God's Word. Psalm 119. And as I read this again, I actually read this not too long ago. Like read all of it one morning. And I thought, wow, that is so, um, I don't quite remember that being in there. But anyway. <laughs> daughter a message and told her that I would call her later. Uh, I always get calls when I start doing this. Okay, well tonight we're going to talk about Psalm 119, 25 through 56. We're going to read it and kind of discuss it as we did last night. So I am going to jump into some prayer. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We just pray, God, that you would bless us, God, that you would protect us and provide for us, God. We, uh, we thank you that you are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. You are on your throne and you are in control. You are awesome and powerful and mighty. God, you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge. God, there is no God like you. God, you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteous. But you are kind and loving and caring and faithful and trustworthy and forgiving. And you are so patient, God, you want none to perish. You want all to be saved. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray out for the we just cry out for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they would be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for them to see where they are, to repent to return to you and to let you reconcile their relationship with you. God, we just pray for all the disasters that are happening um, all over the world, God. We just pray that you would be with these people, that they would be drawn to you, that um, they would experience the hands and feet of Jesus in the loving compassion of Jesus in their time of need. We pray for all the people that are sick. I know so many people that are sick right now. Some with COVID, some with other things. God, we just pray for healing. And we pray that in that healing that they would feel your presence, God. And we pray for their families too, God. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. God, we just uh, thank you again for all the many things that you do for us. Help us not to take things for granted that you do for us. Help us not to take our freedom for granted as many are in the streets declaring that they want their freedom now in other countries. God, we just praise you and thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, hey, my friend Josie, how are you doing? My friend Josie is here. Are you feeling better? I hope you're feeling better. Okay, well, I didn't do a song share again today. 
I had a very busy day and then I got really tired this afternoon and I got really hungry and I just started eating and uh, I started taking a multivitamin today and a B12 and I don't know if that's just going to make me want to eat a lot I don't know I may have to rethink that I just need some more energy. I need to not be so tired in the afternoons. Okay, well, let's start with verse 25. We did 1 through 24 yesterday, and we're going to do 25 through 56 tonight. And then I will not be here tomorrow night. I'll be at youth. So we'll do some more on Thursday, and we might be able to finish up on Friday, if not Saturday. Okay. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies. O Lord, do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments for you shall enlarge my heart. So again, we're talking about God's word. And uh, revive me according to your word. Teach me your statutes. Um, grant me your law graciously. That is just so beautifully put, all of it. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. And then the next part is called He, and it is, Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things, and revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant, who is devoted to fearing you. Turn away my reproach, which I dread, for your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. So again, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. So they're asking to be taught. We need, we need this same attitude. We need this same heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Revive me in your way. That is so good. I'm going to have to get me a drink of water. My throat is very dry. Okay, WA. W A W is like, it's just like the little title of these. They're like in little sections. Let your mercies come also to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me. For I trust in your word, and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in your ordinances. So shall I keep your law continually, forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. I will speak of your testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed, and I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. 
So again, uh, trust in your word. Um, for I have hoped in your ordinances. So shall I keep your law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty. Liberty is freedom. I will walk in freedom because of your word. Because of your word, I will walk in freedom. For I seek your precepts. I will speak of your testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. Wow, that is so, this is so awesome. I really, really like this song. It says a lot. So let's read the last little bit of this. It's called Zane. Remember the word of your servant. And it, it starts in 49, verse 49. Remember the word of your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for your word has given me life. The proud have me in great derision, yet I do not turn aside from your law. I remembered your judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Indignation has taken hold of me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I keep your law. This has become mine because I kept your precepts. So again, remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. Yet I do not turn aside from your law. I remember your judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Because of the wicked who forsake your law, your statutes have been my songs. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I keep your law. This has become mine because I keep your precepts. So if we are following God's word, if we, were, if we are walking in his ways, we are keeping his statutes if we are keeping his ordinances you know which are all in his word all of these are in his word and we meditate on his word daily and learn it and we need to hide it in our hearts because there might be a day that we don't have Bibles we don't know we may not always have the word of God so we need to know some of it by heart and we need to walk in it every day. It is so important to spend time in God's Word every day. And to pray, to pray to God, and to praise. These are so important to God that we do these every day as Christians. That in our Christianity walk, that we are learning more and more about His Word every day. So that was really good. Tomorrow night we will, uh, I didn't put the date on here. Tomorrow night, oh, I won't be here tomorrow night. Thursday night we will continue. We will do 57, that'll be the 12th. The 12th, we'll do 57 through, I don't know, whatever. I'm not sure. I have to look at it to see. Okay. And eventually we'll be through with that. Alright. How do we want to share the gospel? How about steps to peace with God? Which one do I want to do? Let's do this one. It's a little worn. This is a good news tracks. This isn't anything that I made. So it's steps to peace with God. So step one, God's purpose, peace and eternal life. God loves you and he wants you to live in peace with him and to receive eternal life. Since God planned for us to be at peace with him and to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? It's a good question. 
why are people not enjoying this good this experience the Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ Romans 5 1 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life John 3 16 but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord Romans 6 23 Step 2. Our problem, sin and separation. God did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey Him. Instead, He gave us a will and freedom of choice. But like Adam, we often choose to disobey God and go our own selfish ways. Uh, this side of our nature is called sin, and it separates us from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Romans 3.23 and 6.23 So after Adam sinned, the Lord banished him from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3.23 But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Isaiah 59 2. So, step three God's remedy, which is the cross. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. He died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins, completely bridging the gap between us and God. God has provided the only way. And we must make the choice. The Bible says, God but God demonstrates his own love for us. In this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4, 12. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind. The man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2.5 uh, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word, that's Jesus, and believes him who sent me, has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. So this is step four. Our response. Receive Christ. We can receive Jesus Christ when we believe in his message and trust in him alone to save us. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 1. The Bible says, All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Acts 10, 43. Yet to all who did not receive him, to those who believed in in his name he gave the right to become children of god john 1 12. how to receive christ well step one admit you need your need i'm a sinner step two be willing to turn from your sins be willing to repent Step three, believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. Step four, through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to come in and control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him as your Savior. So this is a prayer. It's not the prayer that saves you. It is the belief in Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son. But my child's in there coughing. I don't like coughs. So what to pray? Well, I'm going to say this prayer and I'll leave some space for you. If you would like to repeat it. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am sinful and I need your forgiveness. I 
I believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin. I want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead. I invite you to come into my heart and life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So God's assurance, His word, if you sincerely prayed this prayer and asked Jesus to come into your life, do you know what He has given you? your new life. When you receive Christ, you are born into God's family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit who indwells every believer. This is called regeneration or new birth. God bless you. God bless you as you begin your new life in Christ. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10:13 neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 12 through 13. All right. If you, prayed that, if you prayed that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, God's one and only Son, and uh, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. And like we talked about a while ago, read God's word every day. Read God's word every day. Pray every day and praise. And Jesus was baptized. So pray that God will send you to a church where you can be baptized and you can share your salvation experience through public and get baptized too. And uh, God will lead you to a church family that you can learn and worship with. Like Josie and I have a very good church family. And if you live in Walnut Springs, come to Walnut Springs Baptist Church. That is where we go. All right, well, I think it is. I think I've done everything that God called me to do. I haven't been on here for very long, but I'm going to do God's blessing. I guess I didn't. I thought I marked it, but I guess I didn't. It's marked in my other Bible. I just kind of like this study Bible too. Some. All right, number six twenty-four through twenty-six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Wow, we can all use some peace. This country and this world need some peace. They need the real peace, though, of Jesus, not a false peace from the false prophets. A real peace from Jesus. Okay. Well, it is time to pray again. Josie, do you have any prayer requests? It is so hot in here. Well, it seems like this time of night, it gets really hot in here. I'm over here at the sun's over here this time of night. Okay. Okay, well, 
I'm going to go ahead and pray. And then I'll check and see if Josie has written anything in here. God, we just come to you and we thank you, God. We thank you for all the many blessings that you give us. We thank you that Josie is feeling better and we just pray that you would continue to heal her body and just make her stronger and stronger all the time. We pray for Mr. Mike. We just pray the same for him and the boys. And we just pray that Austin would be protected from this uh, sickness. We pray for blessings for Josie, protection and provision, and we pray for her sisters and her brothers and their families, God. We just pray for protection and provision and blessings for them and for Josie's children and their children, God, the same for them, for their families too, blessings and provision and protection. And if there is anyone, God, within this family that does not know Jesus is their Savior, we just pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. And God, we pray the same thing for my family, for even my nieces and my nephews, God, and uh, other parts of my family. We just pray for protection and provision and blessings. And we just pray, God, that uh, if anyone in my family does not know Jesus is their Savior, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they would be saved. God, just anyone here that needs Jesus, we just pray for that drawing of the Holy Spirit. God, we pray that you would help us to remember to read your word every day and to learn and to study it, God, and to, um, to share it with others and to just hide it in our hearts just in case we don't have these Bibles someday, that we do know some scripture and that we can encourage people with it and encourage ourselves with it. God, we just pray as all these students go back to school tomorrow in Walnut Springs and Morgan, God, we just pray for a blessed first day for the teachers, for the administration, for uh, the school staff. We just pray that it would be a good day tomorrow, God, that it would be a more normal school year than last year, God, that people would stay well and that there would not be COVID in these school systems anymore, God. That you would eradicate this disease because it is a disease. It is a plague, God, that you would eradicate it. And we know that you have the power to do that, God. You have the healing power. I pray for other people that I know that have cancer, God, I just pray for healing for them, that they would feel your presence, God. I pray for my daughter. I pray for healing for her and protection for the rest of her family also. I pray, God, that these that are being healed, that they would feel your presence, God, that they would uh, seek you in prayer and that they would seek you in quiet time, that they would spend this time that they're sick, God, they would spend more time with you. God, we just thank you again for all the many things that you do in our lives, God, that you did send Jesus to die for us so that we could have eternal life, so that we could walk free, and that we don't have to walk in the bondage of sin. It is our choice. We can be free from that. And we can seek forgiveness when we do fail. God, thank you for that too. And thank you that Jesus has overcome death and hell. And he is. He will reign forever. And he has already won this battle that we feel. This intense spiritual battle that we feel every day between good and evil. Jesus has already won. And we are on the right side. We are on the side with Jesus. So God, help us to walk victoriously. Help us to remember 
that we are we are that army that you chose for this time to stand for truth to stand for your word to stand for what is right God help us to be more bold in our stand help us to share your truths and to share the gospel of Jesus unashamedly help us to worship you not caring who sees or who hears God just help us to have that worship with unabandoned God we just praise you and thank you for all that you do and in Jesus name we pray amen I also pray for Josie's friend I don't know who she is God but you do know her her situation so I just lift her and her family up to you and pray that you would meet her needs wherever she is and in Jesus name we pray amen okay I don't know okay all right well my friend Josie I haven't seen any of your comments I don't know if it's like it was before where all your comments I found them later if so I'm sorry I'm not commenting back to you but I am gonna go ahead and get off of here I'm really tired and now I'm really full because I ate so much tonight I just kind of want to veg the rest of the night so uh, Josie and my pray and share warriors y'all have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow and um, much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.